that's the power of you. So unity actually is a powerful it is thing. Powerful. If I think the body of Christ can well. actually learn from this. We example. can learn from that. If yes. we as united and spoke one language yes. today, how much more can under we, the influence under of God's the influence spirit. of God's spirit, how yes. much could we accomplish? accomplish so there are indeed. lessons to be learned. Yeah, yet. a lot of lessons. To Nations learn. can learn from yes. this, but particularly the church can learn. Universal yes. Church of Jesus Christ can yes. learn yes. from this. Yes, they can absolutely learn from this. But there are five facts that we can see from this very passage that we've read, and you've already touched on one of them, and that is. Communication is the basis for advancement. Yes. Can we elaborate more on that? <laughs> if we, another way we can put it is that cur, uh, communication is the currency yes. for advancement. It's the currency. It's the exchange. exchange exactly. That you make. Yes. So when you speak a, the same language, yes. you more have more like a, a likelihood of accomplishing your goal yes. easier. Yes. But when I have to break a, a, a language barrier, so yes. if I go to a country that speaks a different language, I go to to, to Japan. Yes. I first of all have to find a translator. Yeah. So I'm communicating back and forth. But if I just go there, I don't have a translator, I'm going to struggle yes. before I could get, I may True. eventually get my goal accomplished, but it will take a longer time. A longer time. So that, that is definitely important in terms of advancement. We yes. need to speak the same and way. We even think about communication. Yes. Even using the example you just cited. Yes. When you have an interpreter, that interpreter actually chops out a lot of the time. That's true. So say you, you stand up to speak for 30 minutes. And each time you say something, it's it interpreted, translate. which means the, the amount of information you, you convey is less it's because lesser. of the yes. need of a, for yes. a translator. That's true. But if you spoke the same language, you get more things across so, to the people. So something that could have taken 30 minutes can actually take 45 yes. minutes <laughs> yes. in terms of content if true. you were speaking just by yourself. Right. So, right. That, that, so co communication is very important it's as well. Vital. And God understood that. Yes. And that's why it's interesting that he was, God really interrupted him their enterprise, yes, their indeed. unity, yes. by, by confusing their language. Their language yes. So perhaps as they were working on that tower, yes. when they heard the other person yes. speak, they yes. probably suspicion that what is that person saying? But what I find is that there's something else you wanted to say. The second point The here, second point is that uh, uh, diverse languages are man's burden. Can you explain that? It's a burden because just like we, the example already says it in that when you don't know how to speak someone's language, that means it, it weighs on you. Even to think about how nations, they do uh, business transactions yes. and they have agreements and things like that. You have to, if you want to send an ambassador to be effective in that country, you have to find someone, train that person to understand the culture of, that, of the people he's going to, perhaps even speak their language, yes. have, uh, you know, understand. So the things that before, it was, it was very easy because they spoke one language, there are other factors you have to put into consideration because of that language. So it becomes man's burden, you know. People are not uh, transacting as quickly as they could because they have to overcome the language barrier. Yeah, overcome the language barrier. Yes. And in fact, even as we go, as missionaries go into to preach the gospel, go into uh, different countries, they have to still deal with yes. that barrier. Yes. We have Bible translations in, yes. in, in many languages yes. today. They have to overcome that barrier. Yes. So we have one message, but yes. we have to keep on translating, yes. translating. It to be able to reach those exactly. people. So it's, it's, it's become a burden. It's become a burden. It has been. Yes. But God is still not straight. Yes. God is still not stranded. Yes. And the next point, and the next point is that diverse languages are a creation of consequence. Diverse languages are a creation of consequence. In other words, it was as a result of their ungodly enterprise that God confused their languages. So anytime we hear different languages, it should remind Mind us, us of this that is a consequence of man's unity apart from okay. God. Wow. Yes. Wow. Wow. You want to elaborate or should we move to the I, next one? I think one? that's self-explanatory. Okay. And then you have here, we have here that God is willing to put an end to unity when it is rooted in a wrong ideology. Yes. So God, there's a lot of statements we say about unity. But we're reading here from, from Genesis 11 that if a unity does not coincide with God's plan, yes. God will put an end to it. Yes. Or, and eventually he will in, in the end. So it's not, it. it's not unity it's at not, any it, cost. It's not unity at any cost. That's not, God is not just interested in, oh, everything just going together. No, if it's contrary to his will, God will oppose it. So it's not unity at any yes. cost. And then finally with God, it is, as we already said, it's not unity at any cost. So I'm going to go through the five uh, facts again from Genesis chapter 11 real quickly. Communication is a currency for advancement. Diverse languages are man's, man's burden. burden. Diverse languages are a creation of consequence. God is willing to put an end to unity if it opposes his will or is based on a wrong ide ideology. 
and uh, it's, no, it's, no, it's never unity at any cost. Right? Yeah, very good. And as a confirmation for what we just read, look at what uh, the linguistsociety.org has to <laughs> say about the, the confirming the burden eye of diverse languages. I'm going to read it. According to linguisticsociety.org, it says, according to one count, 6,703 separate languages were spoken in the world in 1996. Wow. 6,703 wow. languages. That's Can a you burden. just imagine that? <laughs> that's a that, burden. That's a burden. <laughs> 6,703 separate languages were spoken in the world in 1996. Of these, 1,000 were spoken in the Americas, 2,011 in Africa, 225 in Europe, 2,165 in Asia, 1,320 in the Pacific, including Australia, these numbers should be taken with a, gr with a grain of salt because our information about many language, languages is scant or outdated, and it is hard to draw the line between languages and dialects. That's very true, mm -hmm. especially in Africa. True. But most linguists agree that there are well over 5,000 languages in the world. Agree that what? Five, over 5,000. Over 5,000 languages. Over 5,000 languages in the world. That, that is even, <laughs> you know... So a century from now, however, many of these languages may be extinct. Some linguists believe the number may decrease by half. Some say the total could fall to more, uh, to mere hundreds, as a majority of the world's languages, mostly spoken by a few thousand people or less, give way to languages like English, Spanish, Portuguese, Mandarin Chinese, Russian, Indonesian, Arabic, Arabic Swahili, and Hindi. By some estimates, 80% of the world's languages may vanish within the next century. Hmm. That is interesting. I, I, very interesting. So you already see the burden of languages. Yes. And that we're, we're, as we move closer and closer to the return of Christ, the Bible says that uh, knowledge shall increase. Yes. And we see that. And so that knowledge increasing has made it easier to bridge the divide that yes. languages cause. Yes. But it always has to be something that man has to consider mm. in doing things. So we said from the beginning that from Genesis all the way to Revelation, there's a scarlet thread. It sure is. That even though some people say, how does this fit into the plan. bigger plan of God? God creates languages that becomes man's burden, right? Yes. But God never loses sight of the big, of picture. The big picture. It's not just the big picture and the details or... What happens many times is that as human beings, we have a tendency to get wrapped up in the details and we lose sight of the big picture. But while the details are manifesting, God never loses sight of the end result that he has in mind. So that's the redemptive plan of God. Now, Genesis chapter 12, we now see what God does to address the nations that have been formed. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, we see it says, I will make you, talking to Abraham, I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. So what was God really saying here? When you see further, it says through in verse 3, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Yeah, well, stop by that verse 2, first of all. Yes. <laughs> we were talking about before, these other people at the Tower of Babel were trying to make a name for themselves. But here God is saying he's going to make Abraham's, Abraham's name, name great. great. How do you reconcile the two. Absolutely, because when the people of the Tower of Babel were making a name for themselves, it was for their own self-glorification. Yes. But when God raised Abraham and made his name great, it was for God's ultimate redemptive plan. Right. Yes. So by raising you up and blessing you, through you I will use to bless the nations of the earth. Of course, that was through Jesus Christ, through coming, Jesus into Christ coming into the world. So Abraham was elevated. Yes. His name was elevated yes. so that he could be the platform yes. to bring God's redemptive revelation back yes. into, the, into the earth. Absolutely. Wow. And another thing to look at is the book of Acts. Yes. In the book of Acts chapter 2, we see that when the Holy Spirit came down, the Bible says men were represented from all oh. the nations of the earth. And they spoke different languages but God was able to speak the redemptive message of Jesus Christ to people in all their languages. And what do we say? God cannot be stranded. God cannot be stranded. God made sure that the birth of the church came on the day that all, all the nations, nations were, gathered. were gathered. Isn't that God's yes. plan 
have been. Yeah. So it was the languages represented didn't handicap no, the message. No, they were not handicapped. So they God handicap supernaturally spoke yes. in different tongues through his his disciples, yes. his, his followers there yes. to bring a message yes. to the nations of yes. the earth. Yes. In other words, <laughs> it's almost like what we see that if there was one language in the beginning, this time God spoke the very languages. And, yes. and this is what's, what's powerful about that supernatural event is that these weren't, weren't languages that they learned. It was imparted to them. The same God that confused the language right. gave them the inspiration to speak the languages of those people. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> powerful. Yes, it is. Powerful. Yes, it looks it like is. we've run out of time. Yes. So <laughs> <laughs> this is, this, we, I wish we had more time. This is a, a, a powerful, Very powerful. To, thing to consider and, and yes. to, to give more thought. That God has a purpose for your life, regardless of what nation you're from. Regardless of what geography you found yourself, the time you found yourself in, the fact that you weren't born in 1870, you weren't born during the time of Moses, you weren't born even 80 years ago, that you're in this specific space and time, God has preordained it. That's what we read in Acts 17. God has a purpose for your life. Don't try to go all around trying, experimenting. Come to Him, come to the source. Because he made you with a purpose and he, you are not a mistake. So don't let anybody tell you you are a mistake. His plan and purposes will be fulfilled in your life. Amen. But you have to grab a hold of it. Also want to also encourage you, visit our website, visionforlifeministries.org. We have a, I mean, tons of information there that will be a blessing to you. And as we usually say, transformation, transformation takes, takes place through, through identification, identification with, with Christ. Christ. God bless you. Remember to like, subscribe, and click on the bell so you will never miss any episode from our channel. God bless you.